Pirelli versus Goodyear then, the two big names in motorsport now going head to head in the world of cycling. Why then, when there is so much choice in the market, are we doing Pirelli versus Goodyear? Well, the reason is, is that the Pirelli P0 is without a doubt my favourite tyre and my customer's favourite tyre right now. So anything that comes along has got to compete with the current favourite, right? So why is the Pirelli P0 my current favourite? Well, the reason is I think it performs really well. It's a really confidence inspiring tyre and it seems to last as well. Every single tyre I've had, I've worn out before I've had punctures, although everyone's mileage on that may vary completely. It also is pretty durable on and off tubeless, so you can take this on and off and on and off. It doesn't seem to do any damage and it sets up tubeless really well. However, they have got incredibly expensive. These are now 78.99, I think, for a 700 by 30 tubeless, and that is getting a bit crazy. So anything that comes along that's potentially as close to the performance as possible, perhaps even better, who knows, uh, but for cheaper, I think it's definitely got to have our attention. My absolute very first impressions, probably five kilometers into the ride, they're definitely louder, as in they make some more sort of tire scrubbing noise than the Pirelli's. And that doesn't normally bode well for rolling resistance, but I can't detect that at all. They roll just as fast really as most performance road tyres do, to be fair. It's a very small difference if it exists at all. By the way, isn't this beautiful? Just check that out. <laughs> this looks like a pretty nice place for a bit of contemplation. And I can see why you don't often see tyres reviewed that often, because it's a pretty subjective thing. I'm going to try and do my best, but this is definitely going to be a review based on opinion. I don't even think scientific testing really tells the whole story. So let's see how this goes. So this road surface is about as bad as it gets. It's quite loose, small stones. There's also loads of debris in the road from where the farmers cut the hedges. And there's so much like sheep and cow dung on the road as well. So it's quite a hazardous road surface really. Definitely not ideal. Normally the sort of place where you get punctures and skids and stuff. But so far, tires are doing okay. And that's the most I can tell you. I've just stopped again to look at these tires because I don't think I've seen another tire pick up as much dust as these before. These are literally, you can see, there's a difference in the tone between almost gray and when they're black. Now I ride this road quite a bit. I don't think I've ever seen another tire pick up as much dust. Now I know this is supposed to be a Pirelli versus Goodyear video, but it's quite difficult. So I thought I'd introduce some other brands in there as well. And the thing that really stands out is that Probably the Corsa Pro and the Challenge, cut from the name, two very supple, lovely endurance tyres, sat bar upright in a straight line, lovely and supple, really comfortable. Goodyear tyres certainly don't challenge that, but then nor do the Pirellis either. What we do need to test is confidence going around a corner, because that's where I think speed gains are made up, not necessarily in one or two watts worth of rolling resistance, unless you're a time trialist, but more how do you feel leaning into a corner when you're not on a pro to a road surface, but the road surface, well, looks more like this. Well, weather performance, under braking, actually surprisingly good. Cornering, it's okay. About what I expect, to be honest. This is so grim. What have I dismissed in the process of getting to these two? First off, um, Schwablis. I really can't get my head around these any longer. Their range is massive. It's really confusing. I uh, don't think these fit tubeless at all well. Like It's a combination of really, really difficult or not so hard, and that's it. They have got quite stiff sidewalls though, so if you are a particularly heavy rider and you still want to run low pressures and still get a somewhat supple feel, this can sometimes be a solution. Um, other than that, I pretty much dismiss them these days. Uh, the Vittoria Corsa, similar, they're getting a very confusing range. The Corsa Next, Corsa Pro and, and the standard Corsas, etc. The Corsa Next, I think, are quite good for endurance tyres. And what I mean by that is when you're mostly riding bolt upright, you've got no intentions of banking it over into a corner or need to worry too much about braking and acceleration. 
I think the courses offer a very nice supple ride and they do tend to wear pretty well. The Corsa Pros handle a little bit better and the standard courses, especially these ones, are incredibly lightweight and supple if you really want that lovely, almost tubular-esque feel about them. That being said, if that's really your goal and you love this sort of lightweight suppleness, then if you're doing tubeless, then you've really got to pay attention to what Challenge are doing because these are like handmade tires. You can see that they're flat rather than having any sort of shape. Um, and these seem to be working pretty well tubeless. I'm yet to properly ride these new tubeless ones. I'll probably get a ride review together for you. I don't know just yet, but this is fairly niche for those people who still like this sort of a ride feel. Now, you might be asking, what about the Continental Grand Prix 5000s? Now, I am not a massive fan of these. I find that they tend to disappoint me when it comes to their durability. I find that the sidewalls really start to disintegrate, but also they tend to grain. Um, when they're fresh, brand new, out of a box, I think they perform fantastically, possibly even better than the Pirellis, but it does not take long before they've really started to grain up and even sort of flatten out, especially on the back wheel. And it's one of those things, if you're an owner of these and they're brand new, you'll absolutely love them out of the box, but I think they deteriorate uh, fairly quickly you don't really notice until you get a new set on and you try something else and you go oh yeah these are there's a, there's a change uh, I don't think it takes very long so I don't think this is a great investment and there is one more thing worth saying here about the Pirellis and that is that recently they moved their production to Italy and there is a massive difference in the quality the new made in Italy ones um, if you've ever really come across a beautifully made tyre uh, this is it. I mean, this is incredible. Like the old ones are pretty good. Don't get me wrong, but they just definitely felt like a normal tire. The the new ones um, are on another level. Like the the finishing around where the bead goes is incredible. But also how all, all the um, the logos have come out really sharp out of the mold. You know when you can just feel like you've got your hands on a really quality product, and it definitely feels like that with the new Pirelli made in Italy ones. So somewhat interesting time for this video then because Pirelli have just announced a product recall on the P0 race TLRs in a size 28. Now I'll have a quick look at the recall notice. First up, remember this is a voluntary recall before you all panic too much and it's just on the size 28 which to be fair is probably their best selling size and it's just for tyres made between week 10 and week 24 of 2023 which I think is when they started to ship from their made in Italy factory but let's not speculate too much. Now it's got something to do with compatibility of the tyre with some wheel rims. Doesn't say what brand, doesn't say hooked or hookless or anything, so we can't really speculate. But anyway, if this relates to you, all the code numbers on there, you can take them straight back to your retailer. We've had about two on the shelves, which I'm sure will get sorted pretty quickly. Okay. So what do I think then to the Eagle F1s now? I've ridden them for a bit. And I have to say, it's only a bit. I haven't really got to the stage where I've worn these out or I've flat spotted them or even gone through a winter cycle with them yet either. So this is still a very much an early days. Not quite first impressions, but almost. Um, they are remarkably close in ride feel to the Pirellis. I think you'd have to really, really dial down, ride them back to back to notice the difference. But I'm so familiar with the Pirellis that I think I can make a pretty good comparison. That is that the Goodyears are definitely slightly noisier, but that doesn't really transfer into more rolling resistance as far as I can tell anyway. Cornering, braking, stability, all seems very, very similar. Fitting them up tubeless, these aren't as easy as the Pirellis. The Eagle F1s, I still need to just get my thumbs involved a bit more and I've definitely had to use a tire lever in all of the wheels that I fitted these to, hooked and hookless. Whereas the Pirellis, um, myself and all the mechanics downstairs, and I'm pretty sure if you sell these in your shop, put it down in the comments that these go on almost every single type of uh, rim I've ever known just with hand pressure, you hardly ever have to get a, a tire lever out for those. They're in absolutely no way near as bad as a Schwalbe or a Continental, but they're nowhere near as easy as a Pirelli either. And then what about just general quality? You see, the Goodyears are very similar to almost every other tire on the market. You know, you, how you see the logos have been transferred, the, the sort of the loose edges around the end of the mold, um, the releasing agent, all that sort of stuff. It just feels normal, whereas the Pirellis feel premium. Um, they just feel smooth, lovely. 
even just running them through your hand as you're fitting them to a set of tires actually feels quite nice. And how they've embossed the logos on here has been done really well. All the logos are really, really sharp. There's definitely a difference in the general sort of quality. It's a bit like comparing fake leather with real leather or something like that. It's intangible, whether it makes any difference out on the road, maybe not. Whether that translates into any more performance or durability out on the road, it's really, really hard to say. But for me, it's still quite clear that the Pirelli is a premium product at a premium price. And maybe those returns on that premium are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. But I do think that the Goodyear Eagle F1 is getting very, very close to the performance of the Pirellis. But pound for pound, almost 15 pounds cheaper than the Pirelli, these come extremely close, if not equal to the Pirellis in performance. A quick weigh in before our conclusion then. So the Goodyear Eagle F1, this is the tubeless version, remember, in a 30 millimeter wide, 339 grams. And its main rival today, the Pirelli P0, also in 30 millimeters wide, 331, so just six grams lighter. How about these in? These are the Challenge Strada, tubeless, 30 mil wide again, but handmade, very expensive premium tires, 295 grams. That is about a Kendall Mint Cakes worth of weight saving. And for you traditionalists out there, here is the non-tubeless version of the Pirelli, 268, and a lightweight inner tube, giving us 358 grams. And for those real weight weenies out there, here is a Vittoria Corsa with the skin walls and the lightest weight inner tube I can find, gives us 292. Now compare that to a tubeless setup, here is 40 grams of fluid. Here is a tubeless tire and here is a valve giving us 383 grams for that entire setup. So the weight difference between this and the ultralight saving is 82 grams, which is less than the weight of a lightweight inner tube. I feel like that's quite a lot of compromises in puncture resistance and ride feel for not a lot of weight. Here we go, smooth road surface, put the power down. And now if I was a betting man and I had to pick higher or lower rolling resistance, I would say that these are marginally faster than a set of Pirellis, but my God, it's gonna be marginal. And that is just a pure guess. That might be because these are new and my Pirellis were getting a little bit scrubbed. these I really don't think you'll be disappointed so conclusion then the Pirellis are still my favorite but those prices are making it hard to love whereas the Goodyear's are becoming a very very compelling alternative as always let me know your thoughts down in the comments keep the discussion rolling and until the next time take it easy